got another question for the paper three questions playlist. So this one covers mathematical skills, an application of Arrhenius plots and Le Chatelier's principle. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So first thing I said on the intro was that the, the question was testing mathematical skills. So the first thing we've got to appreciate is that this mathematical relationship is in the form of y equals mx plus c. So I'll be coming back to that um, later on in the question. Part A, straightforward, all we've got to do is calculate the 1 over t values for 500, 600, 700 and 800 Kelvin. And we've got to find the lin of these kps here for those four temperatures. So there's the numbers there. I've just mirrored the number of significant figures for the 1 over t values. So you can see we've got three significant figures there. So I've just mirrored that there. The lin of kp was quoted to the nearest whole number. So I've just matched that with the other ones. So moving on to part B, we've got to state and explain how increasing the temperature affects the position of the equilibrium and state whether the forward reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So what we need to do is look at how temperature is affecting Kp. So you can see as the temperature is going up, Kp is going down. So what that means is the increase in temperature is causing the equilibrium to shift to the left or backwards. So if we think about Le Chatelier's principle, an increase in temperature always favours the endothermic direction. So what that means is this backwards reaction is endothermic and therefore the forward reaction must be exothermic. So moving on to part C now, we've got to plot this graph which I'll show you in a second. Just a reminder that the equation is in the form of y equals mx plus c. So that's why they're asking us to plot lin of kp, so that's the y, against 1 over t, because that's the x. So the gradient is going to be equal to minus delta h over r. And from the gradient, we'll be able to calculate the enthalpy change. OK, so there's my graph. Apologies if I had to zoom out a little bit, just so you can see the full graph. But it's pretty much bang on a straight line. There's just this little slight outlier here but you can see all the other points are, are lying pretty much on this straight line. For my gradient, I've chosen these values here for my change in y, these values here for my change in x. So my delta y is coming out at 75, and my delta x is coming out at 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3. So plugging those numbers in for the calculation of the gradient, I'm getting a numerical answer of 60,000. These orange numbers are just the range allowed in the mark scheme, by the way. So you can go from 57,000 up to 63,000. So obviously, I'm within that. So remember the gradient, the M term, is this minus delta H over R. So 60,000, for me, equals minus delta H over R. So that means delta H equals minus 60,000 times R, which is 8.314. So that's given me a calculated value of minus 498840 joules per mole. It was mentioned in the question information that the units of delta H are joules per mole, but the final answer needs to be in kilojoules per mole and to three significant figures. So we just need to divide this by 1,000 and then put it into three significant figures. So that means my final answer would need to be minus 499 kilojoules per mole. So moving on to the final part of the question, the how would you calculate delta S from the graph? So we'll go back to this um, equation, straight line equation, y equals mx plus c. The y-intercept has got the delta S term in it. So that means the y-intercept equals delta S over R. So all we need to do to calculate delta S is multiply the y-intercept by the gas constant R. 